I love kit bashing. If I'm honest, it's something I enjoy almost as much as I do actually playing the game itself. What is kit bashing, you may ask? What the heck am I talking about? Well, let me tell you. Kit bashing is the act of taking two different kits and combining them in a new and unexpected way. It's an incredibly rewarding experience where you can really show off your own creativity and insight and create something brand new and different. I'm constantly kit bashing, from grot party buses to unique lord discordance to the demon prince of your nightmares. I'm always cutting, moving, and modifying existing kits. It really is one of the most rewarding hobby activities for me, and I love it so, so, so much. Now, many of these kit bashes truly arise from the mother of invention, necessity. I'll often need a certain character with a specific loadout or want to save money on a particularly expensive kit. These kit bashes come unexpectedly and sporadically, and so I never know when they're going to be coming, and I can't really plan for them. But what if? I had the opportunity to plan and design an entire army with the express intent of kitbashing and converting every single model. Well, back in the fall, that opportunity came knocking. We had just launched our membership model for the channel, and with the initial push, we put out several stretch goals for members, one of which was that we would buy, build, and play a rare army. We put out several awesome choices, from an all crew army to the Legion of the Damned, and we said that we would allow our members to vote on which one we'd collect. Well, we blew past our first stretch goals and quickly found ourselves voting on the rare army. And the winning faction was, of course, the mother of all conversion armies, the Dark Mechanicus. The Dark Mechanicus represents the forces of the Adeptus Mechanicus, the servants of the Machine God, that were corrupted by chaos. Whether by the use of arcane forbidden technology, corruption through scrap code, or some good old-fashioned human brains being influenced by the Dark Gods, these mechanical monsters find themselves on the side of the Chaos Gods. Now in the past, there's been a smattering of support for the army, with things like the Chaos Hellrite in the Imperial Armor Chaos Compendium from 8th edition, which had the Dark Mechanicus keyword, but that's about it lately. We still don't have a proper Mechanicus army, and so this faction presents itself as the perfect opportunity to kitbash and convert an entire line of models to their Chaos counterparts. Fast forward to today, where we have recently had the announcement of the new Adeptus Mechanicus book. It seemed like a sign from the Dark Gods to get started on the project. So today, I'm starting with the classic Mechanicus unit, the Castellan Robots. These nasty buggers are the bane of many units on, on, on the table, and I knew exactly what I wanted to do with them. For me, I knew right away that I wanted to mix parts from the Drukhari Talos kit with her traditional Castellan. The basis of the models was much the same, and I made only minor adjustments to the bottom half of the model, such as cutting off the ankle nub so that I can pose the model more easily. This is something that I do even on my regular Castellans. In the top half, though, I knew I wanted to create the image of a corrupted, barely contained ent demon entity that had fused with the inner workings of the robot, and so wanted to use the Talos faceplate, which represents, which presents a sinister, but pretty cohesive twist on the Castellan-style armor. I did, however, need to bulk out the chest, and so, using a classic and cheap material for me, I turned to aluminum foil. I use this on projects that need bulking up, um, but in a quantity that I don't want to waste a bunch of expensive materials such, such as green stuff. So I grab a small sheet of foil and begin shaping, adding layers as needed, and testing it to fit the chest piece of the Castellan. Once it's in a shape I'm happy with, I glue it up, seal it, and attach the faceplate. Cool, looking good. But now it's time to cover up the nasty tin foil texture with something more fleshy and more demonic. It's time for green stuff. For those of you who aren't familiar, green stuff is the slang term for netidite, which is a two-part epoxy substance that you can use to sculpt with. Before these uh, newfangled modern times of digital sculpting, this was the primary method to produce models that would then be casted. You just cut two equal strips of blue and yellow, mix them until they're green, and wait. Usually, you actually want to wait about half an hour or so before you work with it, giving just enough time for it to start to cure uh, and actually lose a lot of its, its, its tackiness and its stickiness. All right, now let's get into it. Losing, using some clay shaping tools, I work the material around the neck, being sure to clean up anywhere it gets on the armor, and sculpt in some nice folds of flesh. And voila, Chaos -y Castellan chest piece. All right, next up, I want to do something with the feet. Um, I wanted to give them kind of uh, the look of armored hoofs on the bottom half of, of their feet. I take the green stuff, I mold it, I sculpt it around the feet, and you notice because it's actually starting to cure, it's actually really nice to work with with the flat of this blade to form these cool looking, maybe armored, maybe flesh, maybe bone hoofs. For the back of the Castellan, there's these little exhaust vents, and they were the perfect opportunity to grab some of the giant vials that are on the backs of the Talos and around their chest. 
I'm imagining this could be some sort of like warp entity or corrupted saint's blood or something that's getting pumped into these, these beasts. And it kind of makes sense that we're actually taking out the exhaust fence where all the waste would come out and just feeding more junk into them. So uh, I really like this. It's, it's a small but cool touch that I'm a big fan of. And now it's on to the weapons. Now, currently at time of recording, uh, there actually is really no reason to run the Castellan Fist uh, except for the fact that they're just super cool uh, because they're so much worse than the shooty variants. But as mentioned, we do have a new codex coming up and so I want to leave my options open and it's just a smart thing to future-proof. I'm going to go ahead and magnetize these arms in the same way that I magnetize most things. These guys are, have nice thick arms and that's going to make it easy to actually add magnets in a way that makes it look like it's just part of the rest of the model. As a starting point for the Castellan Fists, I knew I wanted to use the Talos' main weapons. And this is another place where the fact that these kits have a lot of similarities was great. I was able to actually just build the fists as normal, magnetize them, and they fit really, really nicely. And I think they just look great straight out of the box, from one box to another, I should say. And there we have it the first of the Dark Mechanicus army for the studio. I definitely have some cleanup I want to do. I want to actually add a bit of detail to these hoofs and maybe a bit more weathering um, after everything is dried and cured. Uh, but then it's going to be straight on to painting and basing. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I absolutely love kit bashing, as I mentioned, and so it's really exciting to be able to share my passion for this with everyone. Uh, so definitely sh share in the comments below your own projects that you're working on. Let us know what you thought, and if you have any ideas for our Dark Mechanicus project. And other than that, I'll catch you guys next time on the tabletop.